Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to continue with our building our app for finance and operations. So just to remind you what we're doing here, we're creating an app um, based on customer requirements that I had to do some PO tracking for when a uh, purchase order was coming across the ocean from China. This vendor or this uh, customer is working with, worked with a lot of vendors that were in China and they wanted some way to track those uh, POs as they come across the ocean. Now we did that development inside of finance and operations, but I wanted to see through this series if we could accomplish the same thing through a power app, okay? So this week what we're gonna do in is, this is gonna be the final video of the series. We, we, I think this is uh, video five of the series. So we've, we've built this thing out pretty nicely. Uh, so this week what we're going to do is we're going to add a map through Bing Apps, uh, Bing Maps to uh, show us where the ship is actually on the ocean. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, make.powerapps.com. We'll go ahead and pull our app back up and uh, we'll start working on this. So what we're going to do, I'm on the make.powerapps.com site and I'm just going to go to apps and I'm going to make sure my purchase order tracking app is highlighted and I'm going to go ahead and click edit. It's going to put us into the edit mode here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create a new screen. I just want to create a new blank screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this one Map. So I'm going to rename this from screen two. I'm just going to call it Map. And just like some of the other screens I've done, I'm just going to add kind of a little header rectangle up here. So I'm going to add a rectangle there. And we'll stretch this out. And we'll insert a label there on this one. I covered this a good bit before, so I won't go into depth here what I'm doing, but create a label. I'm just going to call this Bing Maps as a label line, as a screen ID. And I want to make the lettering white there so it stands out. All right, so we'll stretch this out and make that a little bit bigger. There we go. The other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and add an icon up here, just a cancel icon. And I want that to navigate us back to the, the main screen there. So I'm gonna change that icon to white again to make it stand out. And if I go over here to advanced uh, on the on select property, I can type in navigate. And I want that to go back to our screen one. Okay, so this gives us navigation back to our, our screen one there. Let's see, it didn't like something there. Okay, so I've got that fixed there. I think I just had it misspelled or something there. So go to just navigate back to screen one when the user presses that uh, cross there. Now to do the Bing Maps, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a connector first, and then we're going to update an image with that connector value. Okay, so let's create the connector first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to View and then Data Sources, and I'm going to search for Bing. There's a connector for Bing Maps. And what I need is an API key here, okay? So what you want to do for the API key, you just want to search for Bing, uh, Bing API key, and you'll come to a screen, like I've gone to the screen here where we have just a create key, and it's just some simple information you need to fill out. You, you, really for testing, you only want a basic key, uh, but enter your application name, you don't have to put in a new URL, put in the uh, key type and application type. Uh, again, I'm just using basic and a dev test here and then create, and then you will get a key, okay? So once you get your key, what you're gonna do is you're gonna want, want to uh, copy and paste that key into your API key here. So I'm gonna go and paste that in there, and we'll go ahead and connect. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna insert an image into the, uh, onto the page here, or the form for our Power App, and we're gonna render the Bing uh, map into that image file, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into insert and then we're going to go to media and then we're going to go to image and let's just kind of expand this out to make it fill up our screen. And it's going to be right here in the middle. We'll fix that in a little bit, uh, but you just want to kind of size this to whatever size that you you want or for your application there. Okay. So what we're going to do right now, this sample image uh, is what the uh, input type is. So the image type is sample image, but we're going to change that. And we're going to use that Bing Maps connector. Okay, so we're going to start this off by typing in Bing Maps. And we want to get this Git map. We're going to use the version 2 of the connector. And got a couple of different types we can choose from. I'm going to choose Arial with labels. 
Okay. If you notice up here, it's telling, giving us a hint of what we, you know, what the different fields we need are. So the zoom level is how far in the map's going to zoom. So when we're going to put in latitude and longitude, it's going to center that in the map, and then how far we want to center it in. For our map, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quantity of 10 in there, and you can uh, play around with that value if you want to to uh, change the zoom level. Maybe we'll play with it here in just a minute as well. And then the next thing we want is the latitude. So if we come back over to our um, our forms, if you remember from our, our main form here, we've got this gallery here, and we want to get the latitude from the record that is selected here on the gallery, right? So we're gonna, we want this value here. So how we're gonna do that is, let's go back to our map screen and go back to our image. And so we want, that gallery is called gallery main screen, and we want the selected record. Gallery main screen, yep, and then we want the selected. Choose that. And then we want the latitude from that screen, so we'll choose the latitude. That's gonna give us the latitude. And then we want the latitude, this longitude the same sort of way. So we're gonna do gallery main screen. Then we're gonna do dot selected, dot longitude. Okay, now we could stop right there. Let's just go ahead and see what that gives us here. So we're gonna, gonna go here. And so it does give us a map. It's basically centered on our latitude and longitude. So the latitude and longitude, let me go back to screen one, is this 22.28362 and longitude 114.4148. So we come back here, that's where it's kind of centering on. Now at this point we can um, go ahead and stretch this out. Uh, so let's go to properties here and right now it's just fitting in the window. Let's just go ahead and fill it. Go ahead and fill the window. Now another, another piece that we may want to add to this is the like a marker exactly where the ship is on the ocean. So right now we just have a screen that's centered on our latitude and longitude, but maybe we want to want a marker exactly where that's at. So let's go ahead and add that next. So the way we're going to add that is we're just coming here and we're going to put a comma after the longitude. And the um, what we want to do is we're going to do the push, push, pawn, push pin icon style first which that I'm going to use for this one. I'm going to use uh, 54 for this one. And let me show you where I'm getting that at. If you search for the Bing Maps connectors, this Bing Maps Get Map connector, you'll, you'll come, to, come to this help page here. And if we go and scroll down to the parameters that we can use here, there's this push pin icon style, and it gives you another URL to go to. So if we go to that URL, and kind of scroll down, you'll see that there's all these different icon styles that we can use. So we're gonna use, I'm gonna scroll down, and the one we're gonna use is the 54. So that's right here, we're gonna use that kind of icon style, okay? So let's go back here, so I've entered in uh, 54. All right, so the next piece that we wanna do is we wanna to, gotta to tell where our push pin's gonna be, lo be located. So we're gonna put push pin latitude, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this here. So I'm just going to highlight that. We're going to hit a Control C to copy, and then we're going to come over here. We're going to do a Control V to paste. Okay. Now we're going to do a comma, and let me expand this out some so we can see this a little bit better. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do push pin longitude this time. So we're going to do push pin longitude, and I want our longitude. So I'm going to highlight this right here, and then I'm going to do a Control C. And here after the longitude, I'm going to put a control V. And to kind of uh, close this, these parameters off, notice it starts with a curly bracket. We're going to end that with a curly bracket as well. Okay? All right, so let's see what we have now. So we'll get off of that and minimize that. So now we've got uh, an icon that shows exactly where the ship is on the ocean. Now let's play with the zoom for just a minute. So Notice, remember I put the zoom level at 10, so we can do a couple things here. Let me show you how that works. So if I put a five there, and let's notice how it just, it just zooms out on the map, or again, I can change that to 15 and make it really zoomed in, and we're just gonna see ocean when we do that. So now we're zoomed in and we're just basically on the ocean. But I kinda like uh, where 10 puts us, so we're gonna go ahead and, and change that to 10. And uh, let's click off that, and that gives us that kind of nice view. Okay, so 
Let's add a few extra navigational helps here. So we, we already added the, the navigation to cancel, go back to our main screen. Let's go to our screen one. We need to get, be able to get to our map. So let's come back to our main screen and we're going to go up to our icon and let's find an icon. There's probably one that we can use here. So let's scroll down and we'll find one for, I don't know, we, oh, there's one right there we use for location. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and slide that over. Slide that, slide that over here. And we're going to change that to white just so we can make sure that stands out. And then the on select property, we're just going to do the same sort of thing we did on the other, the cancel. We're going to put navigate. And then we're going to navigate to our map screen. So we're going to click map and then we'll close that out with a parenthesis. All right, so let's go ahead and launch this app and let's see what this looks like now. So from right here, we're going to go ahead and hit the play button. And we've got our app here. We've got a record selected and let's go ahead and click on our map. And then here's our map where our ship is. And then to cancel that out and we'll close that out, we we'll go back to our main screen. Okay, so as you can see, adding a map is really easy. It's very simple to add a map to any, any application and you can resize it and put it into whatever form you want. Okay. So this is going to wrap up this series on uh, creating an app for finance and operations. I think we were really able to create uh, a very similar application to what the customer wanted uh, in my case. And it was a pretty robust app that I was able to make. Now, this was uh, done over a couple of weeks, but in reality, the, the entire app only took me about... Uh, three or four hours to create, you know, and to test. It's really very simple to, to make and just starting from scratch. So I, I think there's a lot of value in to be able to be able to use these apps inside Dynamics 365. You don't have to create the data inside D365 finance and operations. So even if you did want to, you know, have create the entities inside Dynamics 365, maybe you need the data there for, for whatever reason, um, you could actually really use this fairly easily to prototype as well. So if you wanted to create a prototype of this app and put it in Dynamics and just let the customer see it and play around with it, click on it and see, you know, what uh, everything, how everything works, I think it'd be a great idea for a prototype because, like I said, you can build these in just a just a few hours and, and have something that's, that works really well. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you learned something. I definitely learned something. I was new to Power Apps and have been kind of learning myself. So I, I'm definitely trying to learn some new stuff here myself. Uh, so again, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It just helps the distribution of the video and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm putting new stuff out every week. So, you know, new video on a different topic every week. So in order to see those videos or get notified when I upload a new video, go ahead and subscribe. Okay. All right. So again, hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.